Only a few years ago, I was spending many days driving across the Italian countryside with my brother's old beat-up car, lonely and frustrated, traveling from supplier to supplier and receiving lots of no's. Thankfully, I was comforted by the company of my oversized stuffed animal, Biba, who accompanied me on all my journeys. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it today, as he couldn't fit in my luggage this time. I'm humble to be here today, and I hope you will enjoy my story as you share the journey of how I'm building my brand, starting upside down. My name is Violante, I am 28 years old, and I'm a fashion designer. I always wanted to be a designer. When I was at school, I used to draw under my desk instead of taking notes. It took my father a very long time to be convinced that this was really the only thing I wanted to do. I remember my grandmother helping me and paying drawing lessons so that one day I could show my father what I wanted to do. My dad was so reluctant at the idea that I remember I told him, if you don't let me study design, you will have to economically support me for the rest of your life. And after I showed him hundreds of drawings, he let me go to fashion school. So I moved to Milano, went to university to study design, and supported myself with work throughout my studies. Studying and working at the same time was exhausting. But the truth is that I've probably learned the most about my future profession by actually doing it. So I started exploring all the different aspects of fashion, from sales to events, working with the machines, unpaid internships, photocopies, coffees, uh, working as a custom designer, and even as a hostess. You know like one of those girls you feel sorry for that tries to give you perfume samples with a smile? After finishing school in Milan, I attended Central St. Martins in London, and then I moved to New York, where I lived in the smallest apartment you've ever seen, at the sixth floor of an old building without elevator. And my room was so small that didn't even have four walls. It was a triangle. And uh, my dad, the first time he came to visit me, he was in such a shock and he felt so sorry that he gave me the watch on his wrist as if I were homeless. So, well, um, I experienced it all kinds of designers. Mark Jacobs, Prince Schooler, Alto Zara, and finally Tom Ford where the dress code was fabulous. And I was always wearing heels, even when cutting fabrics from my back office. I experienced different brands at different stages of their journeys, which in hindsight allowed me to better understand some of the major moments in the life of a brand before starting my own. New York had a huge influence on my career. I was so inspired by the energy of these young designers who were starting their own brands with such a courage and conviction. London was very important for my future. Tom Ford, show me where real luxury is. My aspiration was always to build something of my own. With the advent of fast fashion, I started to long for the meaning behind the clothes, something that I truly appreciated from my experiences in New York and London. But at the same time, I felt something was missing. And I started asking myself, how important is it to do something new? I had an urge to bring back the values, not only of what fashion means to me, but to others who share the same values. Social media had a huge impact on fashion, and this drives off into a constant need of new emotions, new pictures, new people, everything new. The fashion I was inspired by, took time, research, craftsmanship, uh, expressing, building feelings rather than chasing emotions. So it was at this time when I decided to take a step back, when my instinct told me that I needed time to develop who I was going to be and how I was going to do it. And this led me to make the choice to move back to Italy, to learn about artisanship, craftsmanship, raw materials, express my feelings, painting, drawing, over and over again, starting from scratch. And from scratch meant moving back to my childhood room in Casalecchio di Reno, where I was welcomed by my first intern, Biba Paredes, who helped me manage my first showroom in my mom's living room and her garage. Most of the people I knew thought that this 
would be the end of my career. Everyone was telling me how impossible it was, how much competition I would face, and that I was destined to start working for my father. No connections, no influential friends, no money, and no followers on Instagram. My first fashion week ended with me breaking my arm, sleeping on a sofa for months, showing my collection from my friend's apartment, working at the computer with one hand, begging people to see my work. It wasn't easy. In fact, it was quite a nightmare. Once my arm healed, I started driving around Italy, looking for suppliers and manufacturers with my brother's first embarrassing car, which I still have today, and it's alive only because of the help of a local mechanic, Christian, who I used to pay in cookies and biscuits. I spent three years crying, fighting, lonely and frustrated, going around Italy to stores and being rejected for the most of the time. A highlight being one of my first and very encouraging customer experiences that happened in Riccione uh, with the owner of a prestigious multi-brand store. I arrived with a suitcase full of my designs and great expectations, only to be met with the feedback that my pieces will serve better as mops to clean the floor. However, in spite of it all, starting from zero was as exciting as it was scary. I had to learn to do everything, to design garments, run production, calculate costs, negotiate with suppliers and manufacturers, prepare boxes, reply to customers, something that I did for a very long time, pretending it wasn't me. I used to sign my emails under the name of Vittoria, so it looked like I had a big company with, of course, a dedicated customer care manager. I designed my website. I had to learn to shoot prompt images and master Photoshop. It took a lot of conviction to continue, including patience and persistence. It also took a bit of naivety, which always helped along the way. For example, I will always remember the first time I saw Franca Sozzani walking on the street, going into a restaurant. I patiently waited outside before introducing myself. And luckily, she was the nicest person ever. One day, I introduced myself to her for the hundredth time, assuming she wouldn't remember me. And then she stopped me saying, Avila, lo so chi sei, can you please stop? I remember who you are, but please keep moving forward as you're doing. And you will see that eventually you will get to your destination. My journey was somewhat backward, which in the end allowed me to build the brand which was closest to my heart and vision. The most important element to me was and has always been the product first. Most importantly, the meaning behind it. Elegance is at the root of my concept. The etymology of the word elegance, ex legere, comes from Latin, elegance, eligere, to choose, and define the nuances of your own aesthetic. This goes way beyond trends, and it's very personal. Beautiful, to me, is harmony, and is about being in harmony with who you are inside, foremost, meaning above all. Starting from the names of my designs, which carry the names of my favorite artists, prints and shapes, which are inspired by my own art and paintings, which I did from the basement of every place I work from. Tradition and sustainability. My journeys have led me to work with small manufacturers. They care so much about their craft and quality, and they're happy to support small businesses like mine, who are the beginning of their journeys. And some have been forgotten in favor of mass production. Every detail recalls one of the most amazing people I have the privilege to work with, with whom I share more than just production, and who over the time have become family. Now please, take the little envelopes on your seat and open it. Inside, you will find a button, which is one of the most meaningful tokens from my journeys. I found these buttons in an old factory in Bologna, owned by a wonderful lady called Abelia. She was one of the only ones at the beginning who gave me the chance to develop my vision and allow me into her universe of wonders. 
Sadly, last year, she passed away. Her factory closed, and I was almost forced to change buttons. But I found a way how to reproduce them, and now I can continue to share her legacy. And you get the chance to carry a piece of her entire life work with you. These buttons, thank you. These buttons are also an important element for my brand, key to the trousers which I'm wearing now, bestseller that supported the launch of my brand. Moving back to Italy four years ago wasn't a step back. It was actually the step that allowed me to build the foundations and launch my brand, Violante Nessi. I am blessed to be doing what I love, which has started as a passion and now it became my obsession. Last year, we were finally able to launch our own e-commerce and we even opened our first store in London. I'm just at the beginning of my career and it will take a lot longer, but I think there are no really shortcuts. I am proud but totally aware of the continued sacrifice that awaits. I strongly believe that the value that we give to something equals to the effort that we give to achieve that. In conclusion, I've learned a lot from those who have shared their journeys with me. And I hope that sharing my journey thus far may inspire a few others in this room who have decided to do things upside down as well. And looking back, I've learned a lot of lessons the hard way. Preparation. We cannot be ready for anything in life, but we can be prepared and experience is key. My work experiences helped me to shape who I become and gave me the opportunity to learn from my own mistakes. Don't think and just do. Sometimes this is the only way we can get through doubts and difficulties. And if we feel we don't fit in this world, then we can create our own. Start small, even from our room or garage, thinking big. Nothing happens in our comfort zone and many great businesses started from a garage. Time, good things take time. In a world where everything moves so fast, I appreciate the time that it takes to build something of value. Trends are like shining stars, but great things might take forever, but like stars, they will be forever. Just like slow food, I believe in slow fashion. And be true to yourself and listen to your inner child. Pablo Picasso, at the beginning of his career, painted reflecting the society. Only at the end of his journey, he realized that the only thing he wanted to share with the world was his inner child. And finally, always remember, our health and family always come first. Thank you.